Vikings versus Redskins. Welcome to In the Raw, following the Vikings versus Redskins game, where the Redskins came into our house at U.S. Bank Stadium and put a valiant effort to defeat your Minnesota Vikings, and the Minnesota Vikings did just enough to hold them off and get their sixth victory of the season. Going to six and two into the mini bye week that we have. How you doing, Drew? I'll take six and two. Even I'll if it was semi ugly. It was yeah, it was semi ugly. It was even though we won, we took our fourth straight game. It, we seemed like we kind of reverted back to three offenses ago, three games ago. But you know, we're okay. We, we and won we'll the game. talk about that. You got to do what you can to win the game. At least you didn't melt, you didn't melt down and and lose it. But uh, it seemed like Keenan was on kind of a roll, so I wasn't wasn't too heartbroken to not see him come out in the second half. But uh, again, Dalvin Cook carries. You know, it's all about Dalvin Cook. The offense. I don't know. I'll let you guys try to explain what was going down by the time we got to the thirty yard line and in. <laughs> Lots of mistakes tonight. Way too many holding calls. But. You know, they didn't play so well, and they still won. So, I don't know. How you doing, Ted? Gentlemen, how am I always doing? Uh, no, so, like, here's the deal. I would I would rather be an ugly 6-2 and two than an ugly 5-3. and three. True. Very true. <laughs> <laughs> like, like Drew said, there it was a sloppy game. Uh, the Vikings red zone efficiency – it, it, in terms of scoring touchdowns, was not what it was oh. the, the past three games. But, hey, man, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of the Thursday night games. If you follow me on Twitter, I, I kind of gripe about them just because they're generally sloppy affairs and they're not very entertaining football. And the, the best thing you can hope out of that game is to get out of there with a win and not get a major injury out of it. And that's what the Vikings did. Now they got 10 days to rest. For Kansas City, and that's Kansas City and, and Dallas are going to be huge games. Both roadies, and, and it's and it's it's a heck of a lot better to go into those games being six and two than it is five and three. You know what? I, I do want to say something though. I do want to say it's nights like this and games like this where I'm I'm really happy for my I I, I hand it to my legs for supporting me. And for my for my arms, my, my arms are always at my side. And what would I do without my fingers? And you know I can really count on them. So I'm really thankful for all, all body parts tonight. I, I'm grateful for my liver for being able to absorb the amount of alcohol that I've had to drink tonight. Wait, to wait, wait. No, wait. kidding. Wait. We just got another holding call. Hold on. <laughs> holding. Offense, number 65. I've never seen so many holding calls. What about, what about towards the end? We're getting ready to put a put a cork on the whole thing and then holding, holding. Oh. <laughs> now, I even Man. wrote down on my notes that. Do you show us those to make so we don't think you did them or something? Do you prove, to prove it? No, that shows that uh, <laughs> a six-pack in in a football uh-huh. game without eating, and I can still write. I'm pretty talented. I got that from being a crew chief, baby. Um, your notes. What, what do you got in your notes? You have a lot of notes there. A lot That's of those lot holding of calls 19, 19, were ticky tacky. <clears throat> they were pretty lame. You know, when. There were a couple, yeah. Uh, when yeah, when an offensive lineman grabs a guy by his jersey and then he turns around and falls down. That's not because the offensive lineman's holding. The offensive lineman's doing exactly what he's supposed to. It's just that it's like a, what do they call that in soccer, where they fucking, they throw the dramatic crap, a flop, yes. 
and, and they get called the flags. It was like they were emphasizing the referee group, and I need to look them up to see who they were, was emphasizing bullshit holding calls because most of the time those fly by with not being called because they're not holding. The yeah, offensive the linemen doing what you? they're doing. I do, yes. How many, what was the penalties? How many penalties for how many yards? That I did. I don't have. Okay. I don't think I have. Do you have the stats? Yes. What are the penalties? I don't have that. <laughs> is that not a statistic? <laughs> well, it is well, a statistic. Wow. But it's not showing up. Well, I've got NFL. I've got, no, no, I don't have that one. No, that's going to be like an hour. <laughs> do you have the stats? NFL.com. What do you mean? And it's not what do you mean? I have it right in front of me. Well, how about the holding calls? Well, I don't have those, but. Well, hey, it happens. Yeah, so. a couple holding calls were were flutie flakes, but come on, man, there's still a bunch that were that were actual way too many, dude. Okay. Starting a drive, we started a drive with a nice ten yard run, first and 10, 10 yard run around the corner by Cook, and oh. first and twenty, first and twenty, wink, 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 wink. It's like that, that is a great sad trombone. It's almost like it. It's almost like an audio wave file. It's so good. It is. Drive. You know, and it's like, but you know, it was an off night. I don't know. It was an off night, but we did pull out the win, which we expected. And if you bet the under, you're the big winner. Like you got seven penalties for 74 yards. Six of them, it felt like we're on Pat Elf line. <laughs> They weren't all Ryan. the best offensive tackle in the league, or one of the best, Ryan O'Neill. Or he had a holding penalty, specific. gave up his first sack ever. He gave up his first sack, and on that first sack, it looked like he was passing it to Klein, the defender, yeah. Yeah, to go I, for I, the guy that, that was coming was, on the outside. Yeah, I thought that was Klein's fault at first, but I guess it was I guess it was O'Neill. But well, off with, either way, off night. Result around. Oh yes. Oh, yes. Now, let's talk about this regression, right? We, we've we been worried about regression after these last three weeks of absolutely phenomenal play. We got the regression tonight. It looked like Kirk Cousins dropped straight back and sat there for most of the night. What happened to the play action no, rollouts? No, no, and if no. you're telling me... The three four defense. I'm going to throw the bullshit flag no, I, all I, I day. Disag- I, I I disagree that Cousins sat there and and looked clueless and lost. No, he did not. Uh, he was he took a lot of pressure right up the middle for a good part of the game. He then roll the right or roll left. No, you can't. I, I, I would ar- I would argue I would argue by the time he started rolling right or rolling left, he had a dude right in his face, and that's all he could do. To get outside the tackle, throw the ball out of bounds. Vote that uh, way. I, 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 I'm not, I'm not putting, I'm not putting tonight's offensive struggles on Kirk all that much. I, I don't recall. Oh, I think there's a portion of it that belongs on him. He well, was holding the wrong. ball way too you long. Are, you are as wrong. Nah. You are as wrong as communism, my friend. That is what you are. No, no, no. No, <laughs> no uh, I, I, be, I, I don't, I don't see where there was a lot of. Um, when Cousins threw an incompletion, he was rolling out to, to avoid a sack because somebody was coming right up between the guards. Oh, I, yeah, I, I when he's holding the ball for five seconds and nobody's open or he's right not showing there. it. No, I, 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 we're going to agree to disagree on this one. All right. I, I don't, and I, I have don't a theory on this. Oh, his, here we go. His favorite, his favorite receiver is Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen was out for, this, out for the game, obviously due to the hammy pulled last week. He waited most of the night for perfect throwing conditions where somebody was wide open like Diggs, right, before he threw the ball. Otherwise, he checked down. We saw a ton of check downs. He was not as aggressive as he was in the last three weeks and throwing in That's because guys holes. were running up his ass. I mean, he was under hey, pressure. You, Come you, on, dude. Yeah, what but just you because you're under pressure doesn't mean you can't stop throwing the football. Oh, dude. You can't lay that on Cousins. They weren't blocking for shit. The pass hey. block was terrible, dude. Terrible. It's, if you're going to play, hey. I agree. Like play, the blocking was I, terrible, but it was no different than it has been for the shit. last previous game. I'm laying more blame on the play calling tonight than I am at Kirk Cousins. 
the play calling wasn't what it was the last two weeks. Yeah, offensively wise, it wasn't. Kirk Cousins tonight, gentlemen, 23-25. Come on, Dave! I'm sorry, I'm sorry 23-26, and one of those was a drop by Kirk. 3 of 26! 23, and the other two, I believe, were just thrown out of bounds to uh, to avoid a rush. 23-26, 285 yards, uh, no touchdowns, passer rating of 112. Stephon Diggs, his unfavorite receiver, Seven catches, 143 yards. Right. Cook dropped no. pass. Cook dropped one right in his hands. That was one yes. drop. Cook yep. dropped one. Yes, he did. If the quarterback's 23 for 26, you cannot be laying shit at his feet, man. <laughs> but no, a lot of those were the short checkdowns. Just like you would complain about Teddy, that he would do the checkdowns, but still have the high percentages. No, no, no. He was not going deep and being aggressive that the way he was in the last three games. <laughs> Guys in your ball sack. Ow! There were there were a couple plays. There were a couple plays he did check down. I, I'll, I'll give you that. But I, I think overall, I thought Cousins had a pretty good game. I, I I'm not going to complain about it. I mean, 23, 26, 25, man. We disagree. Yeah, it could have been better. I wanted to see the aggression we've seen in the last three weeks. We didn't see it tonight. So, Whether so it be Stefanski like, calling the plays. Or cousins and the offensive line executing them, and I agree with you. The offensive line sucked. When you got that, that, that boy, master, how many fucking turnovers did Kirk Cousins have tonight? Uh, that was zero point zero. How many? Zero. Zero. Twenty-three for twenty-six. No turnovers. Dig Throw had one. Throw him in the Iron Maiden. He's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just. Come on, Quarterback man. does it. And then you get on that fourth and a half yard, right, where they go for it. You were saying it was a bullshit call. The, I, wanted to punt, I wanted to punt it because I felt the only way you're going to give him momentum and give him a short field, I just didn't feel like I, – I felt like since Haskell's in the game, let's make him drive the field and earn it. That's what I, – I, the only reason I went against that fourth down call is I wanted to kick it. And let's Haskins wasn't doing anything really with – we were pressuring him. We were throwing – he wasn't doing anything. Let's make him drive 70 yards rather right. than giving him at the three. I didn't want to give it to him at the third. It was just – it had nothing to do with the play call or whatever. I just felt like punting it right there was my choice. You guys can think differently if you want, and that's why we all have different opinions. Right. But the quarterback sneak is the 90% correct call. You go for the quarterback sneak. And the offensive line should own that neutral zone because they know, own the snap count. They know the snap count. They okay, should okay, be okay. able to Let's drive that off that. the ball. That neutral zone that. was all that was needed to get that first down, and they didn't do but, it. But they were getting owned at the line of scrimmage all night. They were getting owned all night, so that's why you don't call the quarterback sneak. They were getting pushed back from the line of scrimmage all night. So if you're getting pushed around at the line of scrimmage, you don't run that play. You run Cook in the middle. That That's exactly the reason you don't, because they were kicking our ass at the line of scrimmage all night. That's why you don't run that play right like that. I wouldn't no. If we were imposing our will at the line of scrimmage and we were pushing them back all game, then I'm fine with the quarterback sneak. But they were kicking our ass up there tonight. We had 161 yards rushing. Yeah, that's because we have Dalvin Cook. Still, you should be able to get a half a yard. A half a yard. You should be able to get that on the hut. Any offensive lineman that's worth his salt that has pride, and I'm telling you, they should have that, should own that half yard and get Love. there. And they didn't. Can you fill this with whiskey and bring it back to me, please? <laughs> fill it all the way to the fucking, all the way up, right here. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Go ahead, I'm listening. I'm going to sit back and enjoy this. I'm having a good time. It's... 23 of 26 and doesn't turn it over. I want to talk to you in my office. You played horribly. <laughs> hey, we differ. It Getting should deep. have been a better ball game. And it wasn't. Yeah. Mike Zimmer and Kevin Stefanski called a game down to their competition. I, I, would, I would argue they called... How do I put this? So... I think Washington did a good job of exploiting Minnesota's weaknesses on offense. 
They and took defense. away the, the the play action rollout for the most part, and they brought pressure up the middle, uh, up the middle, and made Kirk and made Kirk Cousins uncomfortable. When the Vikings lost at Green Bay, and when the Vikings lost at Chicago, that was the formula to beat them. Uh, tonight, when that happened, Minnesota was able to largely overcome that by instead of doing a bunch of rollouts, hitting Dalvin Cook on screen plays, and and. Gentlemen, how lucky are we to have a guy like Dalvin Cook Dalvin uh, taking amazing. those streets? Because I mean, they ran they ran a couple to Madison, uh, and and they really didn't go for much. But when Cook takes that pass, he'll take a two or three yard gain and turn it into a fifteen or twenty or a thirty yard gain. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I I think once once the Vikings realized what the Redskins were doing, they they compensated and they got that touchdown. What was it? Right before halftime. Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Cook scored last after half, halftime. Last yeah. Uh, and 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 they were yeah, able. Yeah, they had trouble in the red zone, but Cook's I mean, they, they scored. They, they they scored. I mean, they and thank God for the kicker. And when was the last time, as a Vikings fan, we could freaking <laughs> say that? Yeah, he was spot Dan on. Dan Bailey did awesome. Yeah. And so, speaking of our specialists. There was the one snap by the young second lieutenant, Austin Cunning, that was low. Oh, that Colquitt picked up, set up, barely boomed it through three. It was awesome. Yeah. And this is the first time in over 15 years our punter hasn't had to punt. Yeah, but that Kirk Cousins had a terrible game. <laughs> it could have been better. It could have been better. Dude, man, I mean, sometimes, sometimes you just gotta accept the fact you're you're not gonna roll for three hundred or three hundred yards faster than five hundred yards offense. The, no, the no. NFL, <clears throat> the NFL adjusts to what you're gonna do. You know what, guys? And, maybe maybe we should be kind of looking at it like this. We talked about a couple shows ago. During the year, you have a couple clunkers. We talked about that. We all agreed on that. Yeah. If you're going to have your clunker, why not against a clunky team? You know what? Yes, now, and you're still pull out win. It's okay to win your clunker. Your clunker, you usually lose. When we talk clunkers, we talk about a couple games during the year where you just went, holy shit, we're not getting that back. Mm-hmm. But we played terribly. You don't want to play this week against this way against Kansas City. No. So you might as well get the clunker. So, you know, I'm trying to look at it in a positive way. If we're going to play terribly – I told Ruby when the game ended, thank God we were either playing the Redskins or Miami. But, hey, that's the way the schedule works out. We played crappy. We won the game. We won our clunker. So, is that? It's a win, quarter, man. Quarterback it's stinks. Hard, it, it's, it's hard to win in the NFL. It is hard to win in the NFL, and the Vikings won. And, yes. and they did it on, on a three-day turnaround, essentially, playing on Thursday. You know, I mean, yeah, could could things have gone better? Sure. Could they – could did the Vikings leave a lot of yards on the field? Yeah, probably. Were they? Did they commit a lot of stupid holding penalties? Yeah, they did. Did the defense bend like a like Simone Biles in the first half, but not really break? They did. <laughs> not but, no, Olga Corbett. But, <laughs> but they, I mean, the, the defense was shaky, and Z, Xavier Rhodes was terrible. Uh, but but they only gave up two field goals, man. I, I mean, look, it it wasn't great. But it could have been a whole heck of a lot worse. Yeah, we held them under their average of twelve. I mean, we got they only got nine, so sure, we held yeah. them under their average. We won our clunker. I mean, you get it's, it's a lot of different ways to look at this one. But you know, no matter how you look at it, what's the bottom line? You want to get the W, and we got it. But and we got not really much. Not and a lot six and two. And, yes. and and did you guys think after that debacle in Chicago, the Vikings oh. two today? No. No, I, but I, thought, I, thought I originally four, called five. twelve and four for the record, and six and two at this point in the season. No, did I, you, did, honestly, did you think that after the Bears game, no, though? No, no. The Bears game. What did you think after the Bears game? That, that looked like a <laughs> we seven, looking eight, at eight, eight. Yeah, seven, eight, eight, and eight. eight. Yeah, I'm gonna six. throw. I'm gonna throw a little credit out tonight. How the hell are the Redskins one and six? They got a pretty good defense, man. They really but do, yeah. They, they didn't do. They, they were they were jumping all over the place and they had a lot of energy. And I'm thinking, one in six. I mean, they, they're terrible offense, but 
you know what? I was sitting there getting irate during the game going, this is the second worst passing team in the league, and they're just they're killing us. With these out patterns, and it's one Keenum's like seven for seven on one drive, and I'm sitting here going, "What are we doing?" Case Keenum was working over Xavier Rhodes and Trey Wayne. He was working them over, and there is no other way to put it. He was making them look uh, between the two. Between the two, I remember one good pass breakup by Wayne's in the first half, and by that Wayne's. was that was it. That was it. Now, everything, everything else, let's, everything talk, else let's, over. let's talk roads. Where's the bump coverage? How come we're always so far off, everybody? Is Zimmer worried about getting burned deep? I think Is so, that... yeah, I don't know. Let's talk about roads. All right. McClure. Terry McLaurin. From the Ohio State University. Is he really? Yeah. That cat's pretty good, man. Yeah, he is, yeah. He was working roads like a Sacramento $2 hooker. Yes, yeah, he was. Uh, and and he would get Rose to flip his hips and then cut the opposite direction. And or plant and turn around. And it was like Rose didn't used to play this way. He's obviously that sound you hear is him falling off the cliff. Ooh. Cypress it, Hill. What are you Coming doing? Back what about him? in 10 days. Hold on, yeah. hold on. I gotta ask Ted something. She had that McLaren guy and Paris Campbell. Yeah. I wonder we got 62 fucking laid on us. <laughs> <laughs> Holy well, crap! Well, I didn't well, know well, that. Baby. I, I'm sorry, David. You're getting me off subject. Just start thinking about it. Go ahead. <laughs> but it's what do you do with Rhodes at this point? What do you what would you do, Dave? You're head coach. You hate your quarterback, and what would you do with Rhodes? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a defensive guy, so yeah, I hate the offense. Um, Rhodes, it, it, it depends how Hill comes off his quasi-suspension slash vacation. At this point, you're getting to the point where you might replace him. Really? You he trusts Holton Hill? He trusts Holton Hill? No, I don't. Like, not I, like I said, it, for, it depends I mean, how Holton no, comes I mean, off. I'm joking around. Depends. I'm joking around. But this dude, this dude screwed up a huge opportunity to get drafted in the second or third day of the NFL draft and went undrafted. I don't doubt that. Creation. I'm not disputing uh, disputing that one little bit. What is Rose I'm just saying what is Rose you put the best players on the field at how the much time Rose, to win. He hasn't played in two months. Rose, That's Rose, what I'm saying. You don't know how he's coming off his vacation. His suspension. Rhodes Rhode sitting on the sideline with a towel draped over his head making $16 million a year. <laughs> just because well, you're paying him doesn't mean he's good. I know that, but I'm just thinking that. With, talk about what a backward flip-flop that would be, man. I mean, you want to you figure a guy's making $16 million a year. He's at least on the field starting for you, wouldn't you think? You wow. would think, but I want a guy that can actually cover a wide receiver. He looks slow out there, guys. Like he's he looks like, slow and he's making looks like that bastard from the Austin Power movie. Wrong yeah, decision. In my belly. And then he was in perfect position to tackle somebody. It was in the first or second quarter. Coming across, he was right behind him, wrapped his arms around him, and let him go. And it's like, yeah. come on, you can't even make that tackle. And it's it's one of those things that cause worry lines in my forehead. Now, the sec- secondary really is going to – we're at the halfway point. Going forward, um, I think next week we should do a grade. We should do a grade show. I'll, I'll present some grades for you guys, and you guys throw some grades at me for the offensive line or defense or whatever. Okay. But I think – That would be good uh, for this wanted, weekend. Yeah, I wanted to do that because last year I did that, and I kept the paperwork on it, and I still had it, and it was pretty cool. But you got you got to be mostly concerned about the secondary at this point, don't you guys, and the offensive well, line? I, I still think, an off day. Yeah. I still think the back end – being Harris and Smith are doing well. Harris had another pick tonight. Are we going to cover Tyreek Hill? <laughs> yeah, you want to put Harrison Smith on Tyreek Hill? I wish you well. I'm just saying. It did. I'm just saying. It's one of those things that makes you worry. So, yeah, we've got Tyreek Hill and Kelsey going over the middle next week. Woo! We better not be kicking field goals next week, baby. So 
Okay, so here's the deal. Go Bailey. Next year, Xavier Rhodes' uh, cap hit is $12.9 million. Yeah. And he has $4.8 million in dead cap space. So if they can restructure him or cut him, uh, that saves, what, five, seven, almost $8 million in cap space. And as we know, the Vikings are really tied up against the cap next year. They're going to have to make some decisions, and Xavier Rhodes is going to be one of the the biggest discussions I think they're going to have next year. That and Trey Wayne. Trey Wayne's is unrestricted free agent. Yeah, but they could. And right now, right now they can't afford to franchise him because they're 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 over the cap right now, going into next year. And depending, granted, they they can make some moves and get under the cap and blah 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 and all that. But right now, if they franchise him, they're like way over the cap. So we'll see. He is really Trey Waynes has been your best corner so far this season. Yes. Yes. Yeah, what's Overall. that saying? I, mean, I know. That's what I'm telling you. There's issues there. Waynes hasn't been terrible. Remember everybody wanted to trade him back in April? Sure glad that didn't happen, right? Yeah. Be in a world of shit right now. Maybe they could well, still trade either one of them for Trent Williams. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. But I'm yeah, talking about Trent Williams, and I don't remember Reef's name being called today. So he must have done halfway decent. I mean, other than Elfline, I thought Bradbury played fairly well. I thought Klein had a couple of moments where he let his guy beat him. I thought Bradbury did okay. I mean, like, the, the main... You know, O'Neal gave up that one sack, and I think and he, he had a holding out, penalty. He also had a holding. Here's, here's kind of the angle I was coming I from, Dave, when you talk about Cousins. How has the offensive line played the last three weeks? Mostly pretty good. Mostly pretty good. How did the offensive line play tonight? I didn't think it was that good. There's your difference. Don't blame Cousins. Blame what you just said. They've done pretty good the last three weeks. They did not so well tonight. That has to be the reason that they were so sluggish. Yeah, but That's I call, what a lot of that is play calling. If Dennison working, <laughs> you know, the line to do something and Stefanski calling the plays for them to do Let's something, they didn't see Hold that. on, I got my <laughs> Okay. Well, back up. Back up. The line plays good. Follow me now, baby. Follow me. The line plays good the last three weeks. Kirk Cousins is a record setter. Oh, you got that? Write that yeah. in your notes. I Tonight's a good like shit. <laughs> You're killing me. I'm dying. <laughs> See how this all kind of correlates right, together? Right, but who calls the plays? Who calls the blocking assignments? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm dead. I am dead. This is this is like this is Emmy. <laughs> this is Emmy quality television right here. If we don't get an Emmy for this segment, <laughs> then just shut the award down. Coach, I went 23 for 26. You played lousy. Got you. You played lousy. Get out. I'm going with Banyan. <laughs> Offense plays well. Record setter. Three weeks. Offensive line doesn't play well. He doesn't play well. So we need the offensive line to play well. That's oh, I, 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 I get. I get your point. There were. I think I even tweeted it a couple times that, that Kirk Cousins looked a little bit skittish. Mid second quarter, mid third quarter. But, he did look skittish. I'll give you that. And, and I, I think he checked down a, a couple of times. He didn't fumble in the pocket. He, he didn't, didn't throw a pick six. He did not. He, and, did not. And that's I, what we, he threw it away it. when he had to throw it away. I give him that. He I appreciate make, that. He didn't play to make plays that made us lose. And that's what you want out of Kirk Cousins. You don't want him turning it over. But if you're not, I'm telling you, a lot of those plays, he had shit for time. Nothing. And, I, and Nothing. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, when he did have time, he had that one third and long, and he dropped it in the bucket to Stephon Diggs for about 40 yards from deep in Vikings territory, and that got out to damn near midfield, I think it was. Also, that one before the sneak play, when BC didn't run it far enough, that yeah. was a – he right. threw a – caught it, and he got tackled, and looked at Ruby, and I'm like, can't that guy run a half yard further? Yeah. And then stopped on the fourth down, but that was a in-the-pocket, step-front, laser that baby in there. Yep. Yep, that was good. Yep. Oh, I hey, think, let's go I back to Stephon Diggs. Oh wait, okay, but I have one question. Cork wall, cork wall. Can, 
can we shoot the Kyle Rudolph screen pass in the <laughs> sun? Can we? Go to the athletic. Yeah, well, we got. ran it about five can times we, today. Can we make it the Irv Smith tight end screen pass? <laughs> because because the, the one guy in, in the world on the Minnesota Vikings who is slower than I am does not need to be getting a screen pass. Uh, I'm just saying. Yeah, Ruby, whenever he catches it. Why can't you run? <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you Hold think us. of the Vikings starting out first play in the, what was it, the 13th formation, where they have Conklin, um, Rudolph, and Irv Smith? And they had originally, what was it, five guys on the right side before they moved yeah. Irv into motion or Conklin into motion? I thought that was yeah. brilliant. Why? They ran for four yards. Yeah, but it was still an <laughs> interesting way to start. Brilliant four-yard run. Exciting four yards. Was like, that, that was Kirk. But, that was Kirk's fault. <laughs> no, that was Cook. But anyway, it's an alignment. But I thought it was cool. I thought it was Back to Diggs. Does Diggs have a Fumbling holding problem? the football problem? Yes. Yeah. He has more fumble. He has the most fumbles in the NFL uh, from the non-quarterback position this year. I, I wouldn't even have to check that, and I'd have to agree with you. Lost three of them. He has three yeah. or four drops. The yeah, only reason he has the pick last four games was the ball that he missed. So. Yeah. Uh, so like after so after Diggs fumbled the ball on the Vikings' first drive on the. Second or third drive, the Vikings went back to him, or Cousins went back to him, and, and Diggs was wide open in the middle of the field, and he started running. And the first thing, I, I stood up and I said, just go down. Just go down. And and that's what he ball. did. He covered the ball and dropped. You know, on that particular play, I wanted to ask you guys, that he was so open, why not just keep running it until they stop it? Keep yeah, running that play. I know. Yeah. I expected oh, yeah. to see that four or five more times tonight because there was nobody around him. But I said, like, go down, go down. I was doing the same thing. But then he makes that beautiful toe tap play on the sideline. Oh, so yes. I guess, oh, I guess yes. it's also not the Diggsy. You're either going to get some bonehead fumble or he's going to make an amazing play. Well, see, that, I, but, but his fumbling, it, it, it's an anomaly this year. I mean, I think he's had, what, one fumble, one or two fumbles in his career up until this year, and now this right. year he's got four. four. Yeah. I, I mean, it just it, it doesn't make any sense. So. I'd like to consider it an anomaly until, I don't know, he fumbles like nine or ten times this year. You no, know, It wasn't a lazy fumble, and sure, I was angry with it, but he's trying to score. He was trying to make moves, and he's trying to score. Yeah. True. I'm a guy trying to score. But that toe drag swag that'll be on Good Morning Football tomorrow, guaranteed, was sweet. Yeah, it was nice. It was a nice catch. Mm -hmm. Who threw him that pass? Sean Mannion. <laughs> Cousins, be Cousins got benched because he sucked. <laughs> yes, he did. Hey, football is an emotional sport. We get invested, and we tend to put emotions Football's not necessarily in the right. Football's a drunkard sport is what it is. Well, that too, that's part of emotion. <laughs> so, with that, Drew, have there. you got anything else? Add that to your fucking notes. <laughs> <laughs> I see two of them. Get your notepad out. Three of down. whatever. It's too close Double to the damn down. screen. Double. Something turnovers. 23 for 26, zero turnovers. Devin went down to Georgia. You know what I have to say? I have to say, we got the win, damn it. We've got four straight. We're six and two at the halfway point. We're getting to rock and roll, ready to rock and roll into Arrowhead. We'll fix our mistakes. Let's move forward. And I say meow, meow, Viking cow, cow. <laughs> <laughs> Ted, what you got? Hey, man, a win's a win. It's, it's tough to get him in the NFL. And, and it's, you know, if you can have an off night and still win, that's better than having an off night and losing. So I'll take it. I, I mean, yeah, things could have been a lot better. Uh, penalties on the offensive line were terrible. I mean, I feel bad for Alexander Madison because he probably would have had like 185 yards. He lost the 50 yards in that last drive, dude. <laughs> uh, um, I, and and that last drive, I loved it. It was like 13 plays, all runs, and they took they took the ball with like what nine minutes left, and they ran it down to 26 seconds left. 
I mean, that was impressive. Um, Better so, not be settling for field goals next week, though. You no, can't they do can't. They, they, when they get in the red zone next week, they have got to score touchdowns. And, and On the road in KC. Yeah. And I, the Redskins, or the Redskins, the, uh, the Chiefs defense is pretty bad, I think. They're like towards the bottom of the NFL in, in pass and yeah. rush. So. Well, we said that about the Redskins, too. So. Well, the Redskins' yeah. run defense isn't that bad. Their pass defense was worse than their – Defensively, they were like 21st overall, but they were 12th against – no, they were 12th against the pass. Their offense was shitty, and they still moved the ball on us. That's got to be a concern. If they have the 30th-ranked offense and they're moving the ball, I'm pretty sure KC's going to move the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zimmer's got to get work done in the that secondary. Zimmer. Maybe come up with some disguised schemes. Like maybe that play that Barr kind of hesitated for a second that ran off the edge and got the sack. That was a beautifully designed play. Maybe do some trickery, a little trickery next week. But that's next week. We can join the win for 24 hours, baby. We got 10 days off, so we can heal up. Nope. I'll and tell you what, man. I Like I said like I said at the beginning, I'd, I'd rather win ugly than lose ugly, and the Vikings won, and they're 6-2. And, and if you'd have told me uh, the day after the Bears game they'd be 6-2, I'd have said you're a liar. So I'll take it. All things considered, I'll take 6-2 at the break. Or a while at the halfway point. Damn. And? And? And what? Yeah, I'm out, Viking. <laughs> I don't so know about Miami. Oh. Oh, yeah. Little well, homeboy. See you in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. I'm going to call We'll have a special this weekend after this since we're off. Vikings aren't playing this weekend. But until then, thanks for watching. And go Vikings! It takes a W any day of the week.